Welcome to TechFlick. So recently, one of my clients contacted me to build a surprise PC for her husband. Our target budget for today is $750 Singapore dollars. It is going to be slim and of value for this price point. So what are we waiting for? Let's roll the intro. As always, a quick note. Firstly, all the prices for the PC components in this guide will be in Singapore dollars. I'm targeting around 750 Singapore dollars, which is equivalent to around 540 US dollars. Secondly, all the prices shown are as of making of this video and prices may vary. You may end up paying more or less the amount shown in this video. Thirdly, I will summarize all the exact PC components for the $750 built towards the end of this video. And finally, this online shopping guide will cover two popular online stores in Singapore, mainly from Shopee.sg and Lazada.sg. However, if you can get a better deal in stores or elsewhere, do go with that option instead. So with that out of the way, let's start with the online buying guide. Okay, so usually when I do a client build, I will ask some questions regarding how the client prefers the PC build to look like and also what the client intends to use in a new PC. So based on that, I've compiled a list of items of how the PC build should look like and the things that it should be able to perform. Here you can see that the PC build is mainly for work purposes. Uh, my client will be using Excel words to generate documents and also will be doing a lot of uh, email writing and surfing the web, watching YouTube, watching movies. So the second point to note is my client does uh, some light gaming like playing football manager and so forth. And for the third pointer, he likes to keep his music in storage and also likes to listen to music. For the fourth pointer, the PC must have Wi-Fi capabilities. A fifth, it must be slim. And lastly, six, he does not need a graphics card now, but he would like an option to include a graphics card in the future for gaming or video editing. So with this checklist in mind, we will now choose the PC components. I would like to start with point number five. The PC build must be slim. I feel like this is the deciding factor for most of the components in this build. As we are going for a slim case, we have to also consider what are the components that will fit in the case. The first slim case that comes into my mind was initially the in-win chopping case. So is this case over here? It's a case built by the company Inwin. It's super small and slim with an aluminum frame around it. So it comes with a 150 watt power supply. It does have some room for two SSDs at the side panel. You can mount it here or here. And for the other side panel, it's a grill light. However, as you can see over at this picture, if I go for this case, it does not fulfill point number six, which is to be able to upgrade a graphics card in the future. The Inwin chopping case does not support a GPU. As you can see, there's no brackets and it's such a tiny form factor case. But if you don't require a graphics card, you might want to consider this small case. All right, so I had to find a different slim case. And the other option that comes to my mind is the Fractal Design Node. 202. In this case over here, coming in at a price of 120 Singapore dollars or around 87 US dollars from the website Shopee.sg. It comes included with a stand for you to orient the case vertically like this or you can also choose to orient the case horizontally like this. On the front panel, you have a two USB 3.0 ports, a headphone and a mic jack and also the power button. And look at this, you have two PCIe brackets which you can remove to include a graphics card up to 310mm in length with an included riser over here. I think we found a perfect case that will fulfill point number 5, slim case and number 6, able to include a graphics card in the future. Alright, so now that we have found our case, we know more of what components can fit in a Note 202 case. For the motherboard, looking at this case, we will require a mini ITX motherboard that will fit right over here. As I'm going for a Ryzen build, I've chosen the ASRock Fatality B450 ITX motherboard from Shopee.sg. It is priced at $167.66 in Singapore, which is equivalent to around $121 US dollars. It comes in a pretty small size and is monotone in this black and grey theme. You have two dim slots over here and a PCIe Gen 3 X16 slots here for the graphics card. This board also comes with an Intel 802.11ac dual band Wi-Fi. And if my client requires a more speed, you can choose to use the Gigabyte LAN port. So for Wi-Fi capabilities for this motherboard, we fulfill point number four to have Wi-Fi capabilities. 
So another key thing to take note of in this motherboard is that Astro includes a Nichicon Fine Gold series audio caps. Based on reviews, these audio caps produce a great quality and I find this a great addition as my client will be listening to music as seen in point number 3. So that's just fantastic. Also, to take note that I have checked with the seller from that store and confirmed that this motherboard will support the Ryzen 3000 series processor out of the box. Talking about processor, as the client do not require a graphics card for now, this narrows down to only two Ryzen processors in the 3000 series that will be able to output a display without a graphics card. And that is the Ryzen 3200G and the Ryzen 3400G. Both the 3200G and the 3400G comes with an integrated graphics in the processor. I'm going to keep within the budget and I went with the Ryzen 3200G at a price of 136 Singapore dollars or around 98 US dollars. The 3200G is a 4 core and 4 threads processor which is more than enough for work purposes like using Microsoft Word, Excel, watching YouTube, movies, surfing the web and overall multitasking. It also comes with the Radeon Vega 8 graphics. This is an integrated graphics which is enough for light gaming such as playing Football Manager. You can even play CSGO, Fortnite and even GTA 5 at low to medium settings. So with this processor, we fulfill point number one and point number two. Also, not forgetting, the 3200G also comes bundled with the AMD Race Staff cooler for free. It is this black cooler over here. And when it comes to CPU cooler with a slim case like the Note 202, we'll also have to consider the CPU cooler clearance of the case. Fortunately, based on my research, the Rift Staff cooler can fit in the Note 202 case but with a little modification. You will be required to remove the top lid with the AMD logo. It does not really serve any function. And also remove the dust filter on this side of the case in order for the CPU cooler to fit in. So for this PC build, I will just be using this Rift Staff cooler. And if you have any doubts if this CPU cooler will actually fit in the Note 202 case, I suggest you wait for my PC build video and I will link the video on the top right hand corner once it is out. Next heading over to Lazada.sg, for the RAM, I'm going with the Patriot Viper Blackout series. It comes in a kit of two 8GB RAM sticks, so a total of 16GB running at 3200MHz. This comes in at a price of $108.90 in Singapore all around 78 US dollars. Ryzen requires fast RAM and at 3200 MHz speed and a cast latency of 16. This is probably the sweet spot. This RAM is also AMD certified so you can be assured that it will work with the Ryzen system. The RAM also looks great. I kind of like the blackout heatsink and the heatsink is also short which I prefer compared to taller heatsink. Alright for storage solution, my client will be keeping his music work documents and maybe some games. So I opted for the PNY CS900 480GB SSD which comes at a price of 79 Singapore dollars which is around 57 US dollars. 480GB is ample storage for now and it will help to speed up the boot times for Windows and other programs in general. And it will fit in nicely in this bracket in the Note 202 case over here which supports up to two 2.5 inch SSD. It also comes with an all black look which is great. Black is always great. Moving back to Lazada.sg, next for the power supply, we will need to have a small form factor power supply in order to fit in the Note 202 case. I went with the Silverstone SX 500G power supply which comes in at 139 Singapore dollars, roughly around 100 US dollars. This is an SFX form factor power supply and it will fit in the Note 202 case over here nicely. It's also fully modular so you can use only the cables that you need. The cables included are also black flat cables and I find that this will greatly help with cable management in such a small slim case like the Note 202. I went with a 500 watt power supply so that in the future if my client wants to include a graphics card, he can just slot in a graphics card and the 500 watt will be enough for most graphics card. The 80 plus gold certification is also a great addition. Alright so with all of these PC components, we managed to fulfill all the client requirements in the checklist. Now I'm going to summarize all the PC components and their individual prices and we shall see what is the grand total of this PC build. I never make promises Cause I don't keep them I never make promises Cause I don't keep them I don't keep 
And yes, we managed to hit the target of 750 Singapore dollars by about 56 cents more. That's actually not too bad. Alright guys, I hope you find my thought process and this online buying guide useful. I will be buying this exact same PC components and building this PC. So look out for the PC build video in the future. All the PC components will be included in the description down below. And if you have any questions on the PC build, do leave a comment down below and I will try to reply all the comments. As always, if you like what you see, click the like button. If you love what you see, subscribe for more future tech content. Until then, this is TechFlick, signing out.